Hi, in this video I just show you how you can deal with a combined SIF file. If somebody sends you a SIF file that is rather large, it may be a combined SIF file. So what I've done, I um, have taken a file that somebody sent me and it's 239 kilobytes. It's rather large for a SIF file that probably contains some combined information. In other words, the HKL data is in there. So if I open this with Notepad++, then you can see that there is your normal SIF stuff, but also then down here is a whole lot of reflections. So the HKL file is embedded. In OLX2, what do you do? You just drag the SIF file into OLX2, and that opens this combined SIF file. The um, GUI turns green up here, so this tells you it's a SIF file you're working with. And if you click at work, you can sort of see it says extract HKL and address. So um, this is here, but you can also go extract and open. And if I click on here, it will extract the HKL file uh, and the SIF file and open the res file in OLX2. Now you're all set up to uh, carry on the refinement. So um, the rest file contains the QPIX. You've got the QPIX here. And in this particular case, there was a question about charge balance. So we've got a molecule here, and we've got a perchlorate counter ion, and we've also got two chlorides. So first of all, let's just make sure that there's no symmetry playing any tricks. So we double click on the perchlorate, on the chlorine and this other chlorine, and we type info. And that tells us what we selected now is Cl3O4. So this is Cl3, uh, Cl4, Cl in the middle. Let's just un. Um, so we've got one chlorine and, and four oxygens and then two chlorines here. So this is fine. So this is all one to one. That's what I'm trying to say. So we've got a negative charge here, a negative charge here, and a negative charge here. So in other words, this thing in the center needs to be triply positive charged, and uh, we need to check out whether this is actually the case. So back to the QPX, um, I type lines 2 to just get rid of the lines, Control q to get back to the QPX, and um, this model we can see straight away um, th there and there, there is two peaks that are quite big, and uh, yeah, it's point nine. So it's put in the in the region of one. So this is almost certainly a wrongly assigned hydrogen on this nitrogen. So there's really two hydrogens here, and uh, that then means that uh, this is positively charged. So if we go to toolbox work, we can switch the map on, and that doesn't actually show this. So because the map is clearly overwhelmed, or it's it's it's, uh, it's it's bigger things happening here. So we can see the actual the shift the left mouse. We can to left mouse. We should be able to move that. I can't. Yes, I can. It's hardly visible. So we have to fix this. So F4. So this is minus 1.33. So there's a bit of excess charge on those chlorides. So this might not be right. But let's just um, first of all fix this up. So we delete this hydrogen here. Clicking on the nitrogen and typing H add will probably, yes, add the hydrogens correctly. So something had gone wrong in that file and the hydrogens were not placed correctly. Equally, if I look at this one here, so this is probably another positive charge. In this particular case, there's not really Q-peaks here, but Q-peaks are not that reliable when it comes to charges. I'm just going to try this, delete that and type H add. And yes, indeed, the geometry tells us that this is where they should go. So H add actually works by looking at potential hydrogen bonding directions, and there's another one over here. So this thing really is a cation. Um, and type H add again. Right. Now we found three of them, and they all point to this. So we need another mm, positive charge somewhere, and I'm not quite sure to get this from. So first of all, refine it. And have a look at the um, output. So the affect has dropped, which is a good sign. And where is the biggest peak? So this will update the formula. Let's just do this right now. And the biggest peak is 1.3. That's quite significant. And it's, it's very close to this one here. So now uh, let's not forget this is twin data. So we're looking at an HKL5 refinement. Um, so we do expect some extra and spurious Q peaks here. 
where that extra positive charge is located is hard to say. So this to me looks like a pyridine. It could be a protonated pyridine, I suspect, but there is no indication for peaks. So clicking on this should put all those peaks together or put them in a slightly different place. There could be an H3O plus that crystallizes here, but this is something that needs to be looked at in the um, chemistry. So right now, I would say we have three positive charges here and we've got one, two, three negative. That's it. We've got it all. So we've got all the charge balance sorted. We've got three positive charges on those nitrogens and we've got one perchlorate and two chlorides. And um, if I refine this again, then we are looking good. Affect is about 11%. Nothing moves, nothing shifts. Let's have a quick look at here. So the uh, weighting scheme is, uh, is settled. Let's just have a look at the extinction. This is, of course, not going to really work with twin data, but let's um, have a look whether it makes any difference. It makes no difference. Um, it's 17 with an ESD of 17, so that's meaningless. We uh, get rid of that again. And the uh, uh, shift is somewhere there now. Let's just this again. Let's do a few more cycles in one go. We can go refine uh, four cycles. Let's do ten cycles and look at four peaks. And that's exactly what it's doing. Okay, right. So I think the charge balance is now given. Let's have a look whether these hydrogen placements here are sensible. What we can do, we can right click on that oxygen and go explore and see which directions these things go. So this hydrogen points at another oxygen of that, so this is good. This is a chloride, so there could be a hydrogen pointing in that. But this is, uh, yep, that looks so good. I don't think there's any conflicts here. So one thing, um, yeah, so I think I think this now looks pretty good. So the charge balance is, is, is now given and we have learned how to uh, carry on a refinement from a combined SIF file. Now, if I look into this area here, so we have the actor on, so that means we are writing a SIF file every time we go. And just to make sure we've done the right thing, we click on the report and uh, we leave the HCal and res as it is. So this is a Shellex refinement, and that means that this Shellex refinement will embed the HKL data in the Shellex format. So the SIF file that we've got here. In the outside here, this this um, the SIF file here is has been updated. The timestamp is correct and the size is correct. So this is a new updated SIF file, which contains all the same information, including the HKL. So this is the only thing you need to send somebody because that file now contains everything there is to know about the structure. You can uh, always have a quick look at check SIF. So the yeah, so we can run CheckSIF, so you let you go on a CheckSIF report, we can ask for a PDF file if that's what you want to do, or you can look for HTML, let's just go for HTML here, and uh, run CheckSIF, and um, it sends the request to the um, server, the IOCR server in Chester, and um, this could take a little bit of while, a little bit of time to come back, and here we are, so this is the CheckSIF re returned, and there is nothing that sort of stands out right now. The missing cell reflection, so there's no cell reflections. The data the device type is missing. So there's some A alerts, but these are all just because information wasn't there and I've, I've not been provided that. Um, and there's some smaller things which are down to the fact that this is a twin data set. So the absorption correction method is not given. So it's essentially correct, except we are missing some metadata that that should have been there. So if, if you actually work with Olex2, it makes sense to work in the actual work folder if you're working on a particular machine type or if you work in the destruct folder if you work on another manufacturer's uh, file. And then all the information that's there somewhere in the files will come through to the final SIF file. Okay, enough about this. Thanks for using Olex2.